Welcome to the Riverwatch Refresher video that details how to identify caddisflies and stoneflies. So hopefully after this video you'll um, be refreshed on your knowledge of the best ways to identify these kinds of macroinvertebrates. For Riverwatch we use 37 different macroinvertebrates as dream quality indicators. In this presentation we'll be in the insect category and down in the caddisflies and stoneflies. So we'll do stoneflies first. Here's some stoneflies right here. Um, we only, we don't identify the different um, families of stoneflies in Riverwatch. We only go to say if it's a stonefly or not. So here, are the best ways to identify stoneflies. Here's what they look like in a petri dish. So they're uh, kind of a medium-sized macroinvertebrate. Here's what they look like under 10 times magnification. Again, these are different species, so they look a little bit different. They have, a stonefly has two tails on the end of its abdomen, so you can see that up here too. And then two pairs of wing pads, so these are immature wings that will develop into mature adult wings when they metamorphose into adults. Uh, another thing to notice about stoneflies is they have no gills on their abdomen. So those mayflies we looked at earlier had frilly thin tissue on the side that worked as gills. Stoneflies do not. Their gills are usually tucked under their thorax or legs. And this is what an adult stonefly looks like down here. These are uh, one of the more sensitive river watch taxa. So if you have a lot of these in your site, it could indicate good water quality. Next we're getting into the caddisflies. Uh, for the most part, these are also pretty sensitive of pollution. Not all of them. But uh, the best way to identify as a caddisfly is they look like a grub. They have three pairs of legs and then a hardened plate on the first segment of their thorax. That's how you know it's a caddisfly. And a lot of times they build these cases they live in. And then here is an adult up here. For Riverwatch we use the hydrocycid, saddle case, snail case, and other caddisfly categories. So starting with the hydrocycid caddisfly, this is one of the most, probably the most common caddisfly you'll find. They're also one of the most tolerant caddisflies. Uh, most people consider them facultative. Uh, they can tolerate some pollution. Not a whole lot, but some. These are also called net spinning caddisflies. They build a web on the stream bottom and filter out food particles. Over here is what they look like in the petri dish. They kind of curl into this C shape that most, most of you have probably seen before. If we look at 10 times magnification, you can kind of get a better feel for their features. They have three plates on the thorax, so thorax segment one, thorax segment two, thorax segment three, each has a plate. If you're ever wondering, like, how do you know that it's a thorax segment and not an abdominal segment? Well, if it has a pair of legs coming out of it right here, so a pair of legs, pair of legs, pair of legs, that's a, make, that's a thorax segment. So these all have three pairs of thorax segments. They also have gills on their ventral side, their belly, and they curl into this C-shape a lot. They also have an anal pair of anal prolegs with claws coming off. So those fake legs, it's just a fleshy um, appendage with claws on the end to help anchor them in the flow. And then here is an adult down here. Next we have the snail case caddisfly. Uh, pretty easy to know, pre pretty easy to identify if you actually know these exist. I think these were originally described as a species of snail, a mollusk, when they were first found. But these are insects, in fact. So this is what they look like in a petri dish, kind of round um, aggregates of little gravel and sand. This is what they look like under 10 times magnification. You can see the snail shell spiral, spiraling in on itself. So it looks kind of like a like a planorbid snail or ram's horn snail. Um, and you can see their head and legs protrude out of a single opening. This is kind of what they look like under the microscope. You can see the, uh, the thorax here and then the head. Here we have the saddle case caddisfly larva. This is the most sensitive of the river watch indicators. This caddisfly builds a dome-shaped case, has a flat bottom um, with smaller rocks 
and then on top it has larger rocks that kind of form a dome or um, saddle case. Um, this caddisfly is unique in that it has two openings. It has one on the front for its head and one in the rear for its pro legs to protrude from. If you find the caddisfly outside of its case, um, it does have unique plates on the uh, last segment of the abdomen for protection when it is hanging out of the case like this. Um, and as far as uh, the thoracic plates, it only has one thoracic plate on top of its thorax. <clears throat> for River Watch, um, sometimes we, a lot of times we do come across a uh, saddle case with uh, what's called closures. So these are little doorways that they've made um, out of vegetation. So you can see a saddle case right here, and it's made a, a closure over this opening and a closure over this opening. So it's a little bit tricky to see um, that those are actually openings, but the plant debris gives it away that that is a closure and not a completely sealed case. So you notice smaller rock on the bottom, bigger rocks on the top and sides, and that is the uh, that is what the saddle case will look like. We don't want to confuse the saddle case with uh, caddisfly pupa. So if we find a case, it might look kind of dome-shaped, uh, flat on the bottom and round on the top. But uh, if it's completely closed off with rock and it has this translucent material on the, the bottom or the, the ventral side, that is a caddisfly pupa. So it's undergoing metamorphosis, and that does not count for river watch calculations. Lastly, we have the other caddisfly category. So um, these caddisflies are sensitive to pollution, and we want to note their presence at our site. This is what they can look like in a petri dish, so different shapes, some made out of bark and sticks and gravel, leaves. Some of them are free living or you find them without a case. So closer look. So this is a uh, an other caddisfly. He doesn't, you may be easy to confuse them with a hydrocycid caddisfly, the, one, the other one we just looked at without the shell, but he does not have three thoracic plates up here or the stringy gills on his abdomen or the pro legs back here. So this is what they look like. They can build their cases out of various things. The one thing they have all, all have in common is they have three pairs of legs and then a plate over their first thorax segment. Over here, some more other caddisflies zoomed in. There's that first plate on the thorax, no gills on the abdomen. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're looking for the other caddisfly category. And this is an interesting right here. This is the micro caddisfly. Have a really swollen abdomen and then a thin thorax and, and a head. So now you can test your knowledge to see what you've retained. Uh, see if you can identify the stonefly, the hydrocycid caddisfly, the snail case caddisfly, the saddle case caddisfly, and the other caddisfly. You can go ahead and pause the video now and get out some paper or just do it in your head and then unpause it when you're ready to see the answers. Right now that you've put down your answers, we can compare them and see how you did. A is the saddle case caddisfly, the dome shaped shell of rocks. B is the snail case caddisfly, he has a spiraling shell of rocks or sand, gravel. C is the stone fly, so this is actually, uh, he has the wing pads here and the no gills on the abdomen and then two tails. D is the Hydrocycid caddisfly. He has gills on his belly, um, three thoracic plates on his thorax. Then E is the other caddisfly. Doesn't have gills on his thorax. He only has one plate. I mean, he doesn't have gills on his belly, and he only has one thoracic, thoracic plate. So one plate, three plates. So that's the end of the caddisflies and stoneflies refresher video. Thanks for watching, and I hope this is a help next time you're out in the field.